you are all in for an incredible treat this evening. We have two fantastic authors with us. Marcy Dermansky is the author of critically acclaimed novels, Very Nice, The Red Car, Bad Marie, and Twins. She's received fellowships from the McDowell Colony and the Edward F. Albee Foundation, and she lives with her daughter in Montclair, New Jersey. Wai Ki <laughs> Wang was born in Nanjing, China, and grew up in Australia, Canada, and the U.S. She's a graduate of Harvard University, and she earned her undergrad degree in chemistry and her doctorate in public health. Her first novel, Chemistry, received the Penn Hemingway Award for debut fiction, the Plowshares John C. Zacharis First Book Award, and the Whiting Award. Hurricane Girl is a staff pick and a favorite here at RJ Julia. Booklist calls it eminently relatable in a world filled with pitfalls for women who try to figure out what they want for themselves. So without further ado, I am going to pass things over to our guests of honor. Take it away, Marcy and Waiki. Hi, everyone. I'm Waiki. Um, Marcy, you have cats, right? Ginger and... <laughs> <Who's>... <laughs> oh, wow. Cat number one. Okay, okay, so if you're gonna pick up your cat, I should pick up my dog. This is Biscuit. Um, Biscuit and Ginger? Yeah. All right, cool. Well, you know, if they could write, maybe I could go on a vacation or something That'd like that. That'd be good. All right, <laughs> okay. Um, so, uh, so I, feel, I feel like I've known you for a long time, just because I, you know, the first book I read of yours was The Red Car, and I've just followed you ever since, and then I sort of, like, stalked you on Instagram and then <laughs> um, now we're like sort of email pen pals even though this is the first time we met face to face. Um, I wondered if before we got into conversation if you wanted to read like for two minutes? Two yeah, minutes. let's just do that. And I'm just gonna read a really short amount and I'll just read, I like to read with a novel just from like the very beginning of the book. Okay. I don't have to do any kind of introduction. Okay. Four. Okay. Alison Brody bought a beach house. She was 32 years old. She was sick of everybody and everything. All she wanted to do, more than anything really, was swim. The beach house was small. It was in North Carolina in foreclosure. She put down cash, emptying her accounts, everything that she had. She used money saved from waitressing, money saved from a small inheritance after her father died almost a year ago. She had sold the script too and made some okay money from that. A solid chunk. It was a horror script. It was not necessarily make a good film, but a famous actress had agreed to star in it. And so there could be more money, more scripts, success. Allison had been seen as a movie producer's pretty younger girlfriend. She could have been known in her own right. Probably it had been stupid to leave Los Angeles just when her career started taking off and there were so many places to swim. The movie producer, for instance, had a beautiful swimming pool. Maybe, maybe leaving him had been stupid. Maybe. <laughs> Allison wanted to create art one day after she swam. Maybe one day she would want to have a cat. The movie producer was allergic to cats. Maybe she actually wanted to live alone and certainly not with the man who had hit her. It had only happened a few times, exactly three, but it also seemed possible that it could happen again, even though the movie producer had promised that it wouldn't. So she drove cross country doing the speed limit, buying coffees from Starbucks along the way. The beach house turned out to be perfect. Two small bedrooms and a bathroom on the second floor with a view of the ocean. A front porch where Allison could drink her coffee and breathe in the ocean air. Almost all Allison knew about North Carolina was from a long ago vacation and it was wonderful, her favorite childhood memory. The road trip had been insanely long, a caravan with another family. They had taken regimented bathroom stops. When she woke, she had been delivered to a house with an oval swimming pool and a view of the ocean. Allison remembered a large pink dolphin float in the pool with a cup holder built into it for drinks. All the parents got drunk every night and everyone laughed a lot and the kids were allowed to do whatever they wanted. And that's the opening scene of the book. Thank you, Marcy. Um, the chapters for this book are so efficient and just so much happens. Like I, I read this book on, in one plane ride and then because I read it so fast, I didn't have another book. So I read it again on the plane ride back. <laughs> 
Because <laughs> um, I, I thought, you know, I would read it, it would be slow, and then I would put it down and eat something. I didn't eat anything. Um, and I just, it was just sort of this like dynamite book that I just went, you know, like all your books, Marcy, I went from beginning to end right. um, in like one sitting. I didn't even, I didn't even pee. So like that, that's like a, that's like a testament. Sorry. <laughs> um, <laughs> I know that's not what you mean. So yeah. Yeah, no, but I was just like stuck. Cause I was like, what's going to happen to Allison? What's going to happen to this story? And I always read the acknowledgements first because I love reading kind of like what creates a book. And this is your fifth novel. So congratulations. Yeah. What an accomplishment. Um, does, does this feel different than your other novels? Uh, um, you know, Very Nice was your previous one recently. Obviously, you know, Red Car from the beginning, but what 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 kind of, did the fifth one feel different, the same? Um, they, I guess they all feel different. Like, yeah. yeah. Like, I remember, like, the Red Car, for some reason, there was a, a, a gap between Bad Marie and the Red Car. Yes. I think, I mean, you've now written your second novel between the third novel. I, I had that fear. Of, I thought I was never going to, I was never gonna write another book I don't know why yeah. it was really irrational but I was really scared and then this book yeah. came, this book is short and it came pretty close after very nice and so yeah. right it didn't have that kind of insane gratitude to it it just had more like I don't know expectations or I have no idea but they all they all feel different and they're all really nerve-wracking and right Right. You just never know how people are going to react to them. So it's been interesting. Like people, when I put up Very Nice, which is a book I really loved, it's so entertaining and it's so much like a soap opera that nobody took it very seriously. I was like, oh, I didn't know that would happen. So no, way, wait, 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 can I just show this book? Because I just have it. Here. Oh, cool. Look at you. <laughs> um, also a great cover. What do you mean? Like it was, that, was, that felt different than this book writing it or... Yeah. This is not different. Maybe they just, you know, for very nice, my publisher designed me hats and that was really fun. Like they made smat, you know, it's all, it's all good. It's also very weird. Well, you had a, you, I mean, this could be your conversation having a book come out. I'm at the, I mean, I guess people say the pandemic is over, which I don't quite feel, but having a book come out in the pandemic is really difficult. And then uh, and, and yeah. it's just quieter. Like I haven't, I didn't go out. I haven't gone out to one celebratory lunch with my agent and editor and publishing crew. You know, I love that shit. Like I really do. I just yeah. care yeah no, well I mean it was you know for for me like COVID ha like there's just this crazy thing with COVID in my book but with your book it, there's it's there's a hurricane I, I'm not yeah. spoiling anything it's in the yeah. title um and that did feel sort of like this natural disaster that kind of smited this person's <laughs> existence like by the by by the, the second chapter like yeah. it's gone you know like her her beach house is gone and then that really generates and starts the story um, and I think there's just this acceleration of plot and pace and, you know, you move from beginning to end. Um, and it was also very clean, like how you always do everything with stories, it's very clean, compact um, and efficient, you know, without compromising kind of the emotional heart. How did you come up with this story? Because it is crazy at some point. Like, it's nuts. By the end, I was like, oh my God. I didn't even know the funny thing is is that I honestly didn't know that it was nuts while I was writing it I just didn't even know I mean I knew the hole in the head part was nuts there's the character and I won't give away too many spoils but when I was in graduate school there really was somebody who wrote a story where the, the wow. title of the story was called a hole in the head and it was just like the worst story like ever written the way no wrote. that's actually that's actually a line from you it was the worst story <laughs> It was a line from the book and it was really real. And I just like, what I like about writing, and maybe you have this too, is like when these real things in your life just suddenly get put in your book. Like I never yeah. knew that yeah. the worst story ever written in graduate school would, would be in my novel. You know, that's really- Wait, was it, did somebody else write it? Like somebody, yeah, somebody else? else wrote the worst story ever written. And okay, like, well, okay. I haven't been in touch with him in so, like since graduate school, I just don't think he's gonna find out. But otherwise I'm sorry, Chuck. And yeah, yeah, it was bad. It was <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it is actually true like I, I think about during my MFA there are stories that I do remember being very bad I actually can remember the specific line that was terrible. really wow it's just I, this stuck in your yeah. head yeah. It, you know nothing kills a story like a really bad metaphor that never but for some reason it sticks because it's so terrible and you, you're just like thinking about it all the time yeah. um but that did make it into your into your story and and so you started with this idea and you know obviously um I when this when this book came out there was also your lit hub article about how 
um, you didn't know that there was going to be a hole in the head of this character until it happened. And I do want to, like, Flannery O'Connor says something similar to that, right? Like, she doesn't know that something's going to happen until she's, like, writing that sentence and it happens. Um, and was that it? Was that kind of just, like, you're writing, you're writing, and then, yeah, boom, that happened. Yeah, that's basically it. Like, I don't have an outline, and I don't know what's going to happen. And I mean, there was a place, I mean, this book was pretty much exactly the way it was until about two thirds of the way through. And I think I lost, I lost control of, of the plot where I just suddenly didn't, I didn't want to face the plot. And so, and I think this is in my Lit Hub essay, I'm not sure, but there literally was like about a hundred pages where this character is sad and she goes out for turkey sandwiches and she swims in pools with her friends and that's it. And then it kind of ends. And, it's uh. a, and then my agent was like, well, this is really great, Marcy, but, um, <laughs> what about, what about this? Aren't you going to refer to that? I was like, do I have to? And he's like, yeah. And then I just wrote this crazy off the rail kind of like, I mean, the next draft I gave him was completely nuts. And I didn't know that, but I did know when I was writing the, I knew when I was writing boring pages, by the way, that I, I knew I was, I knew I was going to get called out on them. I, I, I tried to say, you know, it's just, nothing is happening. Like I, I like turkey sandwiches. Sandwiches. Yeah. I mean, I turkey sandwiches. Yeah. I think, and I mean, I honestly think that all the scenes that I cut were all good. Like they were all perfectly good scenes and interesting dialogue and interesting conversation, but things do need to happen. And when something really, when something really awful happens to a character in a book, you can't just never refer to it again. And that's essentially right. what right. I tried to do. Was, I right. wanted to just right. do that. It, it, it's sort of like, I feel like almost a short story technique where you're kind of like in a short story, maybe you could get away with it and kind of yeah. it, it could come out differently, but with a novel, yeah. <laughs> given how extreme the beginning was. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I know you, but I think she doesn't know me. <laughs> See, you're at home. You can have all of this action. Oh, you need the charger. Yeah. Oh, my God. Hi. This is so unprofessional. Sorry. My bad. Hello. Sorry. My mom. Well, maybe like, if my mom is watching, she'll be happy to see me. Okay. Okay. Hello. <laughs> you're back. All right. Um, <laughs> parenting in live action. Um, yeah. So what were we saying? Okay. Well, I was saying... Uh, what was I saying? Well, you, you could kind of like not refer to the big event at the beginning um, yeah. in like a short story, but probably you, you couldn't do it in a novel because, just, because it's such a good like plot point. Like her life is just destroyed so easily. It, it's yeah. like this, um, just like a authority, like authoral authority, right? Like you, you kind of just take it away and you sort yeah. of see how this character rebuilds, right? Um, and that's honestly one of the, it's not really a redemption story. It's just one of these stories like, how is she gonna pull this off? How, how is this, how is Allison gonna pull this off and get it back together? Right. Um, I feel like the way that your you like Hur Hurricane Girl is written, you know, um, and very nice was like a first person, and this you're going back to third person. There's sort of this like really cyclic way that you wrote, sort of like almost repetition. Like Allison was thinking about this hole in her head, this hole in her head wasn't closing, and then it's closing, and then it's not closing. Was that something you kind of bumped into as you were writing or and you were aware of or 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 it was like a very natural process of this book? I mean, I was aware of it. I feel like once you put a hole into somebody's head, like it feels <laughs> like that maybe isn't something you're gonna forget. So yeah. I think whenever Allison is kind of like uncomfortable, it's kind of like having a scab on your face from a pimple even. You just kind of check on it. So yeah, you're always checking on it. Reflex, yeah. Um, it heals, what, it heals at a certain point. It heals, yeah. 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 Um, one of my favorite characters in this book is this character called Danny Yang, and he's yeah. a doctor. And I recently wrote a story about a doctor. Um, and so I'm like very kind of like I this soft spot for sort of doctors and stories, right? right. Um, how did that character come to be? Kind of Danny and Allison coming together. Yeah. I mean, that was something I hadn't even intended to do necessarily either, which is funny. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I love coincidences. I just love writing coincidences. And I know people will sometimes, um, in my novel, Bad Marie, the coincidences are again, like over the yeah. top. Like she meets yeah. this writer whose book she read in jail. Like the chances of that happening are really small. But so when I'm writing this, I have her in a hospital and I need to have a doctor. And I just thought, wouldn't it be funny if she knew the doctor? I'm like, oh. And then I just kind of like, I go back into my past and I just pulled out an old boyfriend from my past and I made him into the doctor. And so and I changed his name and the old boyfriend was never on that track, you know, isn't it? Right, right. I think he works right. in clean energy. Oh. And, so, and then it's just fun. Like it's, I like, it's like writing. Sometimes I know people who say that they don't even understand how we can write fiction because 
where do we get these stories and where do we get them? And so I feel like I get stories are completely made up, but I'm just always stealing from my life because I guess it gives me some grounding and, and, and sort of pleases me to write things that I know about and twist them up. And so I'm always pleasing myself when I write. Like yeah. I, I really like enjoy writing. Like I feel like the torture is sort of the in-between not writing stages and worrying about what to write. But when I'm actually doing it, it's like a fun process. And I love putting, I like putting things in it that I know. Right, right. Um, but, I mean, that's true. I mean, I think a lot of fiction comes from maybe lived experiences that yeah. you are just given the ability to kind of mold um, and kind of transform. Yeah. Um, but there is this foundation. And I, I, I agree with what you're saying. Like sometimes when you're writing, you're writing just something that has happened to you comes in or something that you've heard have ha has happened yeah. to someone else just kind of plops into the story. Um, yeah and into the into the into the event um so with this book what was the well, you know every book is different but what was kind of the funnest part of this book to write it sounds like you don't write with an outline or sort of a roadmap which to me kind of sounds a little scary but very very exciting you know right yeah I mean I kind of I've always wanted a beach house. And so I think that I knew what I was doing. Like, I was like, what if somebody gets a beach house and it's taken away right away? So that's what I did. Like, that was intentional. That didn't happen by accident in the beginning of the book. Yeah. yeah. I do that. And I sort of do like the idea of like, it's so awful, but like this character has his new boyfriend and it's kind of like the appeal to him really beyond being nice is that he has a swimming pool. And so it's really <laughs> fun. Like when the swimming pool closes, is she going to continue this relationship? It seems- right so absurd but and and, uh, and I have never I've never been in that situation I've never had to make that yeah. kind of decision but I'm often like meeting people and finding out they have pools and they suddenly do become they, they kind of raise up in your oh my team, goodness right? like I meet somebody and they're like you have a pool and I'm like oh like maybe they're good friend material even yeah and so and so I've gotten myself invited to swimming pools where they might not have invited me if I didn't say something didn't yeah. say something. Do, do you do you feel like in your future is sort of a pool in your backyard? Um, well, my back. I have a backyard right now. I have. I have my. I mean, that's a parallel between Allison and myself in that I have a house right now, which I didn't yeah. have when I when I wrote that book. I was living in an apartment, and now I have my own house, and that's amazing. And yeah. it's not, it's not in a hurricane zone. And the backyard is small but really nice. But it's got a rock garden, which is how it came. Oh. So there's no room for a pool, like you know. So yeah, yeah. you're gonna have to like get rid of a lot of the a lot of the situation. I yeah. could do that though, right? Sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I mean, I so so this book, no outline. You kind of started this plot. Crazy things happen. You're like, why not? Let's go with it. And I do think that's so much of your like your talent and your genius is that. I just accept everything you write. I really don't think anything is that weird. And then, like, yeah, once, yeah, I, stop, yeah, once yeah. I stop reading, I'm like, that was kind of odd that this person had a pool and then she really wanted to go swimming. Um, but for some reason, you really pull it off. And I just believe you in the moment that this is exactly sort of the motivation of the character. She just wants to swim. She just wants her house back. She just wants her cats, right? And she just wants, like, people to kind of leave her alone. There's such near the end I don't want to kind of give anything away but near the end there's so many extreme moments right with her crazy neighbor yeah. you know with this like wedding that just like go terrible right like all weddings if you're if you don't know anyone go terribly that that is universal so I think you did get that right, right. um and <laughs> were those kind of just very spontaneous as well as by the time you got to the end you're like you know I sort of need to make something happen with with, with yeah. Allison yeah, I mean, I did the wedding was definitely a way to make something happen because that that was actually my first draft of my book where I got stuck. That was what oh. happened. Yeah, I, they were. Stuck. You, that had been the first chapter. Oh, the the wedding. Yeah. No, the, the, the wedding is actually like in the middle of the book. She goes. No, to I know, place. I know. But you said that was the first chapter. No, the first chapter was giving her a house and taking it away. Oh, okay. Oh, you mean this is the first chapter you got stuck on? Yeah, that was when I got stuck, and I'm like, well, let's put her on a trip. Like you put somebody on a plane if you don't know what to do, you just move them around, and so that's why she went to Miami. And, <laughs> yeah, I was just like, I feel I find that's good with writing when you get stuck. You change the scenery, or yeah, you yeah. introduce a new character. New characters are always really good too. Yeah. And, yeah. And then I think I was on the phone and I was stuck. And I thank my sister in the acknowledgements because she just said, write about karma. And she gave me a little rant on the phone. I mean, that's from my sister that rant about the holiday. It is not. <laughs> that's my sister. It is so funny. I mean, it's, I mean, I, I would not want to be the 
the person on the receiving end of that. But oh, if I think about it, you cry. It's terrible. Yeah, and I, I think I, I think I, if I were watching it, I would think there is some there's a humor in it. There's just, yeah. there, it is hilarious when you watch kind of this thing unfold at a wedding. Right. Yeah. Um, but that was I did wonder where that came from because it did kind of come out of sort of Allison's general frustration and then immediately like I was like this is very brilliant in terms of yeah. how this dialogue is going mm-hmm. yeah what yeah. do you like writing more do you like writing dialogue do you like writing like set pieces scenes putting it together I like writing dialogue I'm I don't like writing description I mean I do description and I love interior monologue like I feel like that's really important I just always want to have the characters thinking weird thoughts and I like to have them contradict themselves but I feel yeah. like and you can do that in third person too, but yeah, I think those are those are my favorite things to do. Yeah, no, I see that, and I think I don't miss description. Like I don't, I don't sit there after your story, and it's like I, I really, I really wish I knew what the leaf <laughs> looked like during that Miami trip. Like I miss like. All I mean, the- you can just fill in the blank of the readers. A yeah, lot. it's true. Yeah. There's this like narrative script that we have, um, and I think that's how you sort of get to the core of the action yeah. um, um, with this book. It's done. It's done so well. Um, so I wanted to ask a little bit that you sort of have mm-hmm. like back to that piece about revision. You sort of have you're both an editor and a writer. You know, yeah. do you find that those two hats compete with each other while you're writing, or not really? They don't affect, they don't affect my writing at all. I find that like when I'm doing an editing job and I'm working on somebody else's book, like I find it difficult to um, work on my own book Mm. and edit a book. So it's kind of annoying. Like sometimes I have this editing job and though I can't write. So sometimes I'll just have to edit like a lot really quickly or I'm not a great multitasker and I haven't, so many writers teach and I haven't, I haven't been a teacher, but I did, I did teach at Gotham for a couple of years. And I did too, I did too. Yeah, it's a great place to teach, but I found that it was really draining. Like yeah. my students were always sending me emails about their stories and I was thinking about their stories and I was teaching at night and taking the subway and it wasn't great for my writing. So in yeah. a funny way, I mean, that's like the most secure thing a writer can do. I feel like is teach unless you're adjuncting, which is not secure at all. But anyhow, at a certain point- I do both, so it's like a terrible- uh, yeah, it's hard. So I just sort of gave up trying to find that path and I never, it's like, this is my skill is like writing. So it seems yes. pretty, it, it, they just apply to each other pretty easily. And it's, yeah. 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 So do you, I mean, I think, I feel like actually I have trouble editing sometimes. Like when I teach, okay. I actually don't edit that much. Cause I'm just like, you know, you do you. And they're like kind of yeah. they're there and they just want kind of validation in terms of what they're writing. And I just want it to be fun. Right. Um, so oftentimes it's actually easier for me to say, you know, this is really good. Like, think about this, but then I'm not, I'm not an aggressive editor because I don't want it to be, you know, it, it, it is, it is it, editing can be kind of an aggressive process. Do you feel like when you're, you, so you can't write your own stuff when you're editing, but when you're, when you're like, when you're writing, do you self edit? Do you, do you, do you feel like there's this core component of editing that kind of comes over yeah definitely I mean I don't write straight through like there's a I mean the teaching phrase I think is shitty first drafts yes I mean for my own work I don't believe that at all because anytime I open the file I don't just open where I am and just keep going I always go back and I read the last scene and I rewrite I kind of rewrite the last scene I write over it and then I keep moving forward so I think by the time I get to the end of the book the beginning is written so many times and the end is maybe like one draft or two yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that's that's very similar. Um, to it, it's sort of for me. Uh, yeah. Um, I'm always trying to get the beginning to catch up to the end. Oh, yeah. you're, you're at, when you figure things out, right? You yeah. Have to go back and you're also a little bit better with the the narrative. You're like a little bit better with kind of like the characters. You sort of know what's going to happen, so you yeah. have a little bit more. Um, insight about it, but yeah, it's always kind of trying to catch the beginning up to the end. Although, like. Sometimes for endings, it really depends on the other. Sometimes for endings, like I'm sitting there crafting it multiple times because I sometimes feel like a reader will forgive oh. a writer's like bad book. I, you know, I'm always worried that it's going to be a bad book for me. Um, if the ending's really good, right? So then I'm oh, always like, sure. trying to fix it. <laughs> if, you can, if you read a really great book and then the ending is bad, then the whole book is... Yeah, 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 exactly, exactly. Um, and but 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 like vice versa, right? Like if it's like a really bad book and the ending's great, you're like, oh, you know, you, I, 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 you remember it. So like sometimes the ending, I'm just sitting there for like five months, just thinking about how this book is gonna end. Yeah. 
Um, did you know the ending to Hurricane Girl? When did you know it? I sometimes feel like people know the ending by the middle. Well, I, I guess I didn't because I had to cut those 100 pages. Oh, 100 pages? But yeah, no, when I cut from the turkey sandwich. 100 pages? You didn't, you didn't say it was 100 pages. Oh, it was about 100 pages. It was so easy to cut them. They were so boring. Like I cut you wrote 100 pages of swimming and turkey sandwiches? Pretty much, yeah. Because there was another swimming pool. There was a place where I used to live that was like, um, had a swimming pool hotel where it was like a pool on the top floor and you could go swimming there. So when the pool closed, I just had them go to my gym pool. Yeah. It's so boring. It really so was many, so many pools, right? Yeah, yeah. And so then I didn't know. Like I didn't. I mean, my I, they went to a wedding because my sister said talked about karma. She didn't tell me to write go to a wedding, but I sent them to Miami to go to a wedding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then yeah, no, I don't. I I, I didn't know the end. I mean, I send this character to Walmart. And she buys some very specific things. Yeah, she it's kind of forecast the ending, but I still didn't know if she was going to use the things. Like I didn't. No, I there's the, because this character is a horror writer, and there's like a line in the book where she's like, "If I were watching this horror film, I would scream, get out of this house right now." Yeah, yeah. And I just reread the book like about two months ago to remember it because there's so much time. And I'm reading the book and I'm thinking, "Get out of this house!" Like I felt yeah. this thing. It was really scary. It's insane that yeah. she goes back into the house where she and then stays there. It was nuts. Yeah. yeah. So I, I didn't. I mean, maybe that's why. Maybe because the books are crazy that I don't know they're going to be crazy. Maybe that's why they actually work. I don't, yeah. I don't think they're crazy. Like, you have this amazing ability to, afterwards, I'm like, that was really kind of crazy. But then, like, in the middle of it, I'm like, oh, yeah, of course it's happening. Yeah. Like, of course. Day to day, there needs to be reality to it. Yeah, I but I think that's very real because, you know, living through the pandemic and all the crazy crap, mm-hmm. like now, right? It, you're just like, well, why not at this point? You know, this uh, like, I, nothing is really that surprising, right? Um, and nothing is even too extreme in real life. So you're like, well, of course this could happen, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, so there's, you know, there's kind of this like funny family dynamic with Allison and her brother, right? right. In this, in this story. And <laughs> there's kind of this sense of like, you know, the mother, the brother, and this, this sort of like, I wouldn't say this like evil force, but this certainly negative force that sort of encroaches upon her as she's kind of living through, through, through the narrative. Is that something that you were kind of aware of that you were bringing in or uh, just like you were saying, naturally, as you're writing, it kind of just flowed through. I mean, I, I really do think that the hardest scene for me to write, um, and it's, it wouldn't be what you would think would be the hardest scene. The hardest scene for me to write is when she comes out of the hospital and her brother and the wife had comes over with the baby to visit. And yeah. that scene was so difficult for me to write. And I don't know why. And that scene just kept getting, it was long. It was like almost like a 10 page scene. And all of the scenes in my book are really short, but yeah. there's so much material I wanted to put in. And, I, and there was also like, what do you know? Or what don't you know? Or what you're going to reveal? I had to rewrite that scene like so many times. And it was so difficult. Like I struggled with that one scene, maybe, I think that's a scene that people probably just read over and don't take notice of probably. Yeah. But that one was really hard for me to write. And I mean, I thought that scene was great, but it was, um, but you know what I mean? As like a reader, I'm like, you know, as a writer, you're harsher on your own stuff, but as a reader, you sort of just, you just kind of fall in line with the story. Right. Um, and she has this, you know, there's that moment where she has a sort of like Allison has a desire. She has motivations. She wants her house. She sort of yeah. wants, you know, a family in many ways. She wants some sort of human connection, right? Um, and one of the wonderful things about Alice and I, when I was reading her, is that she kind of has this like numbness when she, when these terrible, terrible things are happening to her. And was that something you were consciously trying to think about? That generally, you know, when we're dealing with trauma, like any kind of trauma, right? The the more extreme it is, after a while, we just we just like tune out, right? Mm-hmm. And we just try to go on autopilot even though there's nothing else that there you Allison can't do anything to improve her situation right well she can just go to the bathroom and take some pain pills I guess like <laughs> I think that scene she takes more than she's supposed to like that's in one hour time mm. yeah um I didn't know I was writing a book about trauma until after it was published and then people right. asked me about trauma and I'm like did I write a book about trauma I'm like oh I guess I don't, I don't think it's necessarily about trauma it's just yeah. like about it's like a you, you sort of do this great way that the entire book sort of acts as this like metaphor for something. Yeah. You know, everyone can kind of put in 
something that they've gone through, which is essentially like a hurricane knocking down their beach house. Oh, I love that. That's such a, I mean, I, I would have never thought of that, but it's true. Like my, this knocked down beach house could be somebody else's anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I think um, that's something you could fill in for it. No, and I think that's like what's great is that there's almost this like allegorical quality about it because I was thinking I was like, oh my god, this is like what kind of the last three years have been like. This is like sort of my like addiction to work, blah blah. Like just everything gets like wiped out in my life, mm-hmm. um, and yet you know the uh, a really good writer is able to kind of create something very concrete out of that and 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 create kind of this like story out of that. So I mean, I think that's why this story was so addictive and it just reads so quickly because every line kind of like cuts through um and is 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 just like so forward and pace pace what would you say this is a thriller <laughs> i think it becomes a thriller yeah. Yeah, yeah it does become a thriller yeah do you watch oh my dog's back do you, dog. um what inspiration for this yeah i don't know because i don't i don't watch horror at all you don't no, no, no horror, no thriller, nothing. No thriller, not really. No, yeah. What do you do? You watch anything, or do you read anything that it's like similar to this, or this just kind of came out fully? I, think, I mean, I watch a ton of television, of course, but no, I think this just sort of came out. I think I was trying. It's so, it's so lame. Like I've written too many books at this point about writers. And I feel like I'm not willing to do research. And I think with this book, I was going to try not to write a book about a writer. So I made her into a horror writer. And she's still a writer. Like it's just so, I have to do some research and write about a different kind of character. But I did at least make use of horror writing. Like I thought that was really fun. And I have seen horror films. It's not like I watch them now, but I saw, when I was younger, I saw Scream and I saw all of those movies. I know how they work. And so it's-, it's Yeah. Good. Yeah. Well, the, the thing with this is, you know, it feels, you're, it is horror, but it, it almost feels very normalized horror. And I think that's, kind of an explanation of how like the last 10 years have gone in terms of five years or whatever like everything just gets normalized right and then well well, to me horror like there's just as much horror I don't know like the beeping of car like beeping like the beeping of like hospitals like in your book Joan is okay she worked in she works in an ICU lab and I'm going to hospitals I just have so much admiration and like I don't even understand how doctors can do it to tell you the truth because they're so loud and there's so much beeping and I just I just <laughs> really, the beeping just makes me crazy and yeah, so yeah part of regular life and I think that's in the book and so yeah no it's like I think you like well well it's like she's in the hospital well it kind of mimics her brain injury right she's yeah. like, you can't tell if she, the beeping is from her mind and whatever yeah, um, and Danny Yang the the doctor is just so funny I don't know how many Danny Yangs I know in my life but the sense of like everything's gonna be fine you know you you're on the brink of death but I brought you back and uh and now you're fine and I didn't I you know aren't you glad I saved your life even though I didn't ask for consent or anything I just saved your life because I'm very brilliant um I don't know I don't know how many people I know who's like that that like because everything is life and death there's no sense of I guess they have another person or they wouldn't be a good doctor I think if you were a doctor filled with doubt that would be really bad yeah there's no doubt there's no doubt about anything and sometimes that can be like yeah, I couldn't be a doctor. <laughs> like, but but sometimes, you know, I just had like a doctor friend come over yesterday who sort of had was having this like existential crisis, mm-hmm. but, like the sense of inability to deal with like ambiguity, you know. And Danny Yang never deals with ambiguity. Yeah. Right? He's just like Allison. Are you in or are you out? Right. Like this is sort of how he he deals his cards. Um, and I think there is a you know and it's like well, if you're in then we're gonna get married right like the sense of there's this almost extreme acceleration of how um a relationship is gonna go given how like binary he sees things and that's true like that's a lot that was a lot of part of my character of Joan that I was thinking I, I just see it I just know that character it's it's yeah. it's really a sense of efficiency I think for them yeah. because if they sit there and like dwell about the ambiguity they just they they won't do anything right you know yeah it's another extreme. yeah it's another extreme so you said you did no research for this you didn't you didn't you didn't know you don't like doing any research for your novel I did I did do research on brain injuries I totally did because I don't know anything about it and then so that kind of I had the injury I moved on I went back and I put that in there and so like little things that I didn't know like the light the like watch a light back and forth like that was research I found that out yeah Um, sitting up after brain surgery so the swelling doesn't go down like I couldn't have made that up but it's not the best research like I didn't go 
And I haven't, we could do it right now. I haven't been busted on it up until this point. And so it still could happen. But I didn't I'm interview not bust you on it. I don't know. I didn't think you were, but I didn't interview a neurosurgeon. I just used I just used Google. Yeah. And I do, I do um also edit books and I, t- I I literally did take on a job while I was writing this book because it was about a mother whose son needed emergency brain surgery in Hawaii. And I thought, oh, this could be really useful to me. Um, that's terrible, <laughs> but it's really true. So I edited her book and I learned about her son's brain surgery. And I think I did a really nice job editing her book, but I learned about what happens after brain surgery. So that was research and I got paid for it. Yeah, no, that's amazing. I mean, I think it, it's, I actually think with medicine, sometimes the less you tell like a reader, the better it is, you know, yeah. because it can get, the lingo is intense. You don't yeah. want to show off. It's like, there's just, it's just like a whole ecosystem, right? And I think what the reader does fill in a brain surgery and, you know, he's going to save lives and he's sort of doing his own thing. And Allison is just kind of along for the ride and things like and I've that. I've been in hospitals and I know the people who wake you up to ask you what you want to have for meals and stuff. Yeah, like that. yeah. And the, the, like bad, bad, the bad hospital food. That's terrible. Bad hospital yeah. food. I like, the thing with me is like, I... I've been in hospital since I like, you know, in high school, because you have to volunteer and shadow and things like that. And I think like the, I I didn't realize I didn't like it until like, I just stopped going to a hospital. And I was like, oh, I, didn't, I didn't really like that period, just because everything's very sterile and everything's sort of like the beeping, but there's just a, there's this like uniform that everyone's in. And Danny, Danny is certainly, certainly part of that uniform. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so what what other things do you want to talk about for this book you know we can go to questions but I wanted to know if there's anything that kind of was we want to I want to talk about the cover but I do you want to talk about the cover but for me this cover was I, I really love the cover um like I'm, I'm going to show it again because when I first saw this cover on Instagram because I stalk you um I was like this is amazing I know, I know, you, know, you, can, you click like on my pictures and I had a feeling that you were like interested in my work that's how I figured it out yeah I know because like I, I was I'm very interested in work I'm always following kind of what you do because I feel like it's it's just so adventurous and I, I I think I'm always kind of taking a page I'm like what's Marcy what would Marcy do here well she would throw this person off a cliff and then bring her back I know that there's a voice in your head so that's <laughs> um and I think I want to I want to know a little bit about kind of like the cover art and how it what what's the history of putting together covers and you know moving forward with, with Hurricane Girl because with me sometimes you're kind of given a couple of options and that that was sort of it you know well, I mean, the person who does, I love this cover, by the way. I love yeah. it a lot. And there are elements into it. And people don't, it's made by Janet Hansen. And she you showed the cover very nice, which is like the ice cubes. And so she, she's designed this cover too. Oh, she did the, she did very nice. Can I yeah, she, and, and those, the very nice letters are like ice cubes in her bathtub is what she told me. And so this cover was actually, I, I was given one other option and I really actually hated it. And I, and hate, it. I hated it. And it was, and it was interesting because it was so wild and it was so bold which made it kind of exciting because it was like a cover like no other that I kind of thought I should just go with it anyway. And then it just made me unhappy. And so I went back and forth with people. That's what you do. You talk to people and I got polarizing reactions. Yeah, yeah. So the, the, the first cover wasn't anything like this, right? Yeah, it was almost like a wide open mouth with teeth and it was black. Oh, oh. Yeah. yeah, it was very different. That's was- a little strange, right? Yeah, it was strange. I don't have it to show you. But like, what I, like some people don't really understand like, I mean, and I could have, I could interpret this wrong too, because I haven't talked to Janet, but to me, this is a bleeding sun. It's a bleeding sun. Like some people think their like leg is coming out of this dot, but I think it's a hot sun. It is a, it is a bleeding sun. Yeah. And that's great. Uh, The ocean, you know what I mean? And there's, so it just, it feels like it it captures everything without being a photograph. And so it's really nice to get an artist, you know, and, and just have them have a vision to it. So that felt very No, I agree. I agree. Um, And then, so this is the second cover. I kind of feel like, and I sort of like the text. It's it's very good. I'm, I'm very jealous of this cover. Well, thank you. I mean, you have. I mean, Joan is very striking. I feel like, but yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It, it, sometimes you have no idea, you know. Yeah. Um, and I and I thought immediately I saw this. I was like, amazing. It's good. Mm-hmm. Um, what are you? You know, I I want to ask what are you working on now? But like, I know your mind is always in novels because like novels is sort of like a uh, like what do you do in between novels? Um, yeah, it's tricky. I have I have this writing process that I really don't like, and I want you know it's a, it's a terrible process and it's making you laugh. But I wasn't going to do it for this novel, and I'm doing the same process for this novel that I've done for every other novel, which is I'm essentially I'm not working on anything right now. Okay. Um, 
That's good. That's probably good, right? I I mean, I did. I worked on a novel in between. I was going to be like, this time, I I actually have a contract for my next novel, which I'm so grateful about. It's so amazing. But I haven't, I wrote like about 80 pages of a book. So I was like way ahead. And then I just decided that they weren't working for me. And so that was really kind of sad and depressing. How do you, how do you know when something's not working? Like what, it, what is your kind of well, thing? I don't know. You know, honestly, with those pages, they might've been working. I think, I think they might've been a little bit too autobiographical and that made me uncomfortable. And I think I don't, I don't want certain things out in the world. And so that might've been part of it. I had one friend, I have like the same readers for every book and one is a friend. Right. And the friend was like, I think this is the best thing you've ever written. She did that. And then the other reader was my agent. He was like, well... <laughs> <laughs> your agent actually seems like this like sort of like ver- this like voice of reason but also oh, yeah. all right he's got this epic i mean he's on vacation right now so he's not watching that's probably good he's got epic i mean he's been my agent for my whole career which i think maybe since 2005 like he mattered yeah. a good deal to me and he kind of he feels like family and i feels like i mean this is my work but like your agent is the person who takes care of you in a way yeah. Like they give you your money. They take care. So if 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 when if he's lukewarm about my work, I don't I don't have to listen to. But that just brought me so far down. So well, he he said well, and then he didn't need to say anything else. Was that yeah? Right? Yeah, and he was like, this is, he's like, if this is what you want to work on, I'm going to support you. <laughs> and that's not usually his response to my work. You know what I mean? So yeah, fantastic. Um, <laughs> Yeah, no, sometimes I do oscillate between, like, how much is too personal, how much is not personal. Yeah. It's the sense of, like, even if I bring something in that's personal, I can always change it, right? Like, I could put it somewhere else and protect it. But there's, like, certain things, like, personally, that I'm just so, you know, I feel so passionate or angry about that. I'm like, you know, I I just need to figure out how to deal with this material in a way that is not, like, I'm going to hurt everyone that I talk about with, but it's also important that I kind of, like, get it on the page, you know? It's a real, it's a real balance, because I, I never, it's so hard, it's hard to, like, not hurt people if you're writing, I mean, that's why I don't write memoir. But but that's, like, what writing is, like, I mean, I was talking to Sigrid Nunez about it, and Sigrid was like, what do you think writing is if you're not selling out someone to a certain extent in your writing? It's actually really nice to hear, and they're, this book upset somebody, it upset somebody and I think I've already made peace with the person it upset and that was really upsetting to me because they matter to me and I just like tv I was watching I'm not I'm not a huge Sally Rooney fan but I was just watching conversations with friends today and the second to last you know I can't believe you just said that because I feel like I can't say that to my students or I get like crucified (laughs) yeah it's weird but I love her television shows I love the show oh it's good it's good they're good I love them they just cast the most beautiful people and it's just well that's that's yeah I, I, oh that's good that that's good yeah. but I mean in, in this in the scene this person writes a short story about her friend the, she doesn't tell her friend the story gets published and when the story is published her yeah, friend yeah. is no longer her friend and I was like oh look see that happens so no, t- I usually tell people but I come from a community where even if I tell them I send them a link they will never read it so oh that's like, well cool. that's like perfect you know I'm like I'm giving you all the warning and you won't yeah. read it and I, I'm done <laughs> But I love, I mean, that was actually really helpful. I mean, I know, I love Sacred Unit's work. Yeah, yeah. No, she's like, she's always like, well, you're going to sell out someone. So like, okay. it's going to be fine. And she's always like, parents are fair game. It doesn't matter. You know, and I was like, oh, thank you. Thank you, Sigrid. I don't know if she's right about that. I mean, yeah. Yeah, no. Um, I, that, I was going to, I was going to go to the questions um, right now. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay, great. Um, All right. Oh, do you want me to read the questions or you can't? You can go for it. You want to read them? Yeah, I'm I'm happy to read them. All right. Um, Okay, so there's a question. Was the mention of a red (laughs) card? This is near the end. And I did circle this because I'm obsessed with that book. Was the mention of a red card in Hurricane Girl specifically engineered to make me lose my mind? Because I did. Okay, well, but I did too. I love it because I actually knew in that moment that it was going to make people lose their minds. And and it made me lose my mind. Like I was just so thrilled that I could do that. And it wasn't a coincidence. It was like, what is it? With with DVDs, it's called like an Easter egg. This was an Easter egg. And you mean video games? Yeah. (laughs) But I knew that I was doing that. I wanted people to lose their mind. And it's even more specific than that because the car in the red car, I never say what kind of car it is. Yeah. And it would really disappoint it, but that's the kind of car 
that I yeah. don't say that it is. So yeah. Yeah, no, yeah. swimming pool is red cars. You've really trademarked a lot of things. You next time, whenever you do a red car, you need to do like this George Saunders thing where you put like a TM on the word. It just, oh, like, I want to do that. Yeah, yeah, because I do. What I love is I do have people constantly sending me pictures of red cars that they see that they're interested in. All yeah, yeah. I, I mean, like I would them. never get a red car because I think I would get pulled over too much. Really? I kind of yeah. love this concept of it because it just is, again, what you do, which is like, it's almost symbolic of something. You never drive it home right because right. the reader can kind of fill it in what that represents mm-hmm. desire or whatever um and it's just a, a sign of a of, of just like a great story yeah um okay so this question comes from sarah the last question was from Wes, but this question is from sarah i love your books and the ways you mix sadness and delight and humor and surprises do you consciously balance any of this in writing or revising um like do you ever think you have too much or not enough of some quality That'd be nice. No, <laughs> I don't, I don't work on balance. And so I, mean, I think you must need to have a quiet moment. Like, I think I must be aware of that, but I don't, I don't like write numbers or keep track or it's just, it just sort of comes the way it comes. So. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I mean, it's incredible that you wrote a hundred pages of swimming and turkey sandwiches. There really was nothing. Like, can you salvage that in any way? Well, I probably, I don't keep good tra- track of my files. So no, I, I couldn't find them. Like, I don't think they exist. But I know, I know that sometimes like forcing myself to write, because I mean, that's a great thing you want to write every day. But sometimes if I'm struggling, it's, it doesn't, forcing myself to write is not a good idea, because then that's what I'm going to do is they're just going to go out for that. I don't think you can write every day. I mean, I try to write every day, but sometimes you just get depleted. You know, if you yeah. spend like five hours writing, like on Sunday or something, sometimes Monday, you just don't have yeah. any. It doesn't, there doesn't have to be balance but so I mean I like that there's balance in my work and I want to take credit for it and say like I know it's all there and I mean I think a lot of what we do is unconscious so I yeah I, I claim all of it but I don't take keep track either yeah yeah so you don't you don't have like an organized I only have one file for every one of my books yeah me too I might have 20 drafts but I just delete it and then I just I just have one file. Right. Like even if you have the 20 drafts. Yeah, all, yeah. It just, I keep saving it. I keep saving it. So I never, I just, I, I think, I know people who do like draft one, draft two. And I'm like, how can you keep this like record of your failures for like a year? You find what you want anyway. But yeah, I, it's one draft for me. Too. I just have one file and then I keep rewriting and overwriting it. Mm-hmm. Um, all right. So this question comes from April, I believe with a Y. Um, how, hi, Marcy, what's something new you learned or something that surprised you while writing this book? (laughs) Hi, April. Um, I mean, it's just hard. I mean, one thing I've just sort of like, I've learned this from Haruki Murakami is I just feel like like you can just reuse material. Like when he, his books, it's just like he, they have that bingo card for him. Drink every time there's a cat. Drink every time, and and there's a, there's so many things, and and I I'm worrying. I mean, I don't know what my next book is going to be, but I've now had two books in a row where I've had swimming pools that are really prominent, and I'm I'm just letting myself. Like I would say, like I feel like it's self indulgent. Like I'm just letting myself be self indulgent in my work. And what's that. your stroke? What's what do you start freestyle? I just do freestyle. I mean, I like to do I like to do breaststroke, and yeah. I'll throw in some backstroke, but I'm not like good, and I can't oh. do. Did you? Because I like swim in high school um for like varsity and then yeah. I think because I was like swimming like I had to get up at 4 a.m to swim for like uh, yeah. hours fast too I, I admire that and but it was like I, I think I really kind of ruined a lot of joy of just like you know you're just floating there right for a little bit I mean yeah. the best thing I did during COVID it really was the best thing is I, I was worried the first summer that the swimming pools finally opened but they didn't open until the middle of July yeah. I, took, I took private lessons Oh. at a backyard swimming pool and I know how to swim I just signed up for the lessons because yeah. that was the only way I was going to be able to swim but it turned yeah. out the lessons were really really great and this teacher had me yeah. like, cut my stroke where I put my arm in much sooner and glide yeah. and like I swim differently now and I swim more efficiently and I'm in the swimming pool and I, I will sometimes swim laps and I'll there'll somebody be in the next lane and I'll, and I'll be passing them I don't have stamina so I can only like race somebody for two laps and they don't know that I'm racing them but I'll win and they don't know I'm racing but I don't think I was fast before and so well you, the way you race someone is you have to be in their lane and then you have to like grab their ankle and then pull them and then you, <laughs> like you try to drown them and then you yeah. push ahead that's how <laughs> right. I had to do it okay. um well I think you know maybe adding to April's uh, question just like a little bit of do you 
do you do you, like for me sometimes choosing a perspective is really hard like it, do I go first person like third person do I pick this perspective do I switch perspective is that something that you kind of know from the beginning of, of a book I think that's something I know yeah okay. like when you said like this book is in third person yeah I didn't even know that like yeah you didn't, what, how do you what, what how do you mean you didn't know that not <laughs> really I wasn't really conscious of it so yeah okay. I knew that I knew that very nice was in first person because I, I got accused of having every voice sound the same, which no, I No, I mean, well, this my the third thing I'm working on, this third child is in third person. And it's slightly different because I'm I have more freedom. Like with first person, sometimes I just get a little bit more claustrophobic. But with third person, I'm like, I, let's just let's just keep writing, you know? Um, and sometimes that was something I knew I discovered recently. But but like I think you, you know, it changes perspective can be helpful. All right, this question is from Rebecca. What advice do you have for new novelists about balancing marketing and writing? That's a really good question because yeah. I, I would love to know the answer to that question because I don't know. Um, now that you've written five books, what are the best ways you have found to market your books? Mm-hmm. Well, I actually have like a quote from like a writing professor, which is good. Like it makes me sound smart, which was like, um, I studied with Frederick Bartholomew or Rick Bartholomew. And he, what he said, he said, he said, consider like selling a book was like, the, the marketing was all like selling watermelons and so I guess you write a book but then a book selling a book is selling watermelons and I think yeah so you have to detach yourself and you're not selling your personal pride and baby and your child anymore you're selling watermelons and, and what, I, what I think kind of sucks like I've gotten better at marketing like this is my fifth book and I my, with twins I used I was like one of the first users on MySpace I feel like and I was really oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's no MySpace anymore. And like right now, I feel like I tried, I tried so hard to like make a TikTok account and I posted like about 10 or 15 videos and I just couldn't, I can't watch TikTok because yeah, it's too loud for me. I can't, watch TikTok. I can't even watch TikTok. I'm like, I'm like a little closer in age to my students and I, I don't know how they watch. I don't even think they like TikTok. It's so annoying because everything in the clips are just so short and they just repeat and the noise just blares. And yeah, like, I feel like I'm going to have a seizure. But I, I think- I'd rather, you know. But I feel like books are being sold on TikTok and I can't do it. I feel like there has to just be a, I think there has to be, I know that I'm more successful when I play this game. Who says, who told us books are being sold on TikTok? Who said that? Did Justin Bieber say that? Who said that? There's like these influencers and right now they're actually like taking old books. They're not taking like new books, but like they can just make a book that's like five years old into a bestseller. And if you go into Barnes and Nobles, they're like, they're like TikTok tables, books recommended on TikTok. So I tried, I didn't, I didn't succeed. I gave up with it pretty quickly. I think you have to do it. And I think you just have to not obsess and just realize, I mean, a lot of, too much of it is out of your hands. So, so much I mean, of it. I think that's so a good thing to say is like so much of it is out of it. I mean, I do feel like I did meet you on Instagram and I was aware of your clicking likes on my posts. Like I really was. I think in one time I finally wrote to you because it's like she keeps clicking likes on my posts. And I, I know that, like, and I know who names are. Do you know what I mean? And I think- I think real connections are made and I think that's really valuable. Yeah. And I've, I've made, I mean, I don't know about you, but I've made plenty of friends in real life just from social media. So yeah. I, I feel like the only person writer I know who's able been to successfully not do it is Kevin Wilson. And I kind of just so admire him that he's just been not able to play social media, but. It's hard not to, cause yeah. I'm sort of in, I am in the generation of like big social media. I think, you know, I'll say, I'll ask my friend, I'll like, what'd you do yesterday? And she'll be like, why didn't I, I saw that you saw my Instagram stories. And I'm like, <laughs> but you could have told me what you did without telling me I should have liked your Instagram stories. You know what I mean? Like you could have said you got, you went out to brunch at this place, yeah. you know, like, so I think it was a test. And that's what I sometimes don't like about social media because you're yeah. testing if I saw it and you know, I saw it. So what is this conversation really about? Yeah. <laughs> it's like this game with social media. Um, so, okay. So question from Craig, I loved how you turned the unreliable narrator thing on its head. Oh, that's good. Like, this, Craig knows what he's talking about. Um, no pun intended. It's not that Allison is throwing us curveballs so much as her injury is clouding the issues for her. How did you approach writing that? Was it deliberate or organic? Organic. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it just happens. Yeah. I mean, I felt like she was completely reliable. Say that you know i think because if you, if you give someone a brain injury oftentimes you feel like maybe this person is not as reliable right okay, sure. but may, maybe maybe like people in you know brain injury they become genius but i don't know i don't know i think she knew every single thing she was doing she she yeah. got to do yeah 
maybe they weren't the best choice well I think what you did because it's in third person is that um when I was reading it you know I I had I I was like thinking is this Allison having sort of like a lapse in judgment or is she like actually really clear-headed you know because oftentimes you don't really always know what Allison's thinking but I think you gave the room that she like this this brain injury was almost like a wake-up call for her it wasn't necessarily like she actually got more confused it was like this wake-up call and then she actually kind of fell into her real self right yeah yeah and and so the reader's kind of guessing you know I hope this is not all a dream I hope this no. should like come out like um more confused but I actually think she sort of clicks into her real self and that's the benefit of how you how you wrote her um yeah no I agree I I wasn't like she's so unreliable but, I, but there was that question I was like is I was thinking is Marcy playing a game on me because I do feel <laughs> like you do play this game on readers and I love it because that's why I read it you know because I, I love the game of like negotiation with the with the with the game with the plant right um but I never felt that Allison was being dishonest or distruthful I think she was actually being very genuine but I did wonder what you were doing right <laughs> um okay so that kind of concludes all the open questions and we're kind of at the end of the, our time, but is there anything you wanted to let us know about this book that maybe I didn't touch on because I, you know, I'm trying to cover everything and I want to make sure that you sell this book because I it just, I just love this book. Yeah, thank you. I mean, I love that you love this book. Um, I think I did for, for, for this sale, like I think um, you said they're, they're going to be book plates and I made stickers. I drew stickers of cats. And so I think you yes. get a really sticker. You get a really nice book plate if you order it from this event. And if anybody ever like I had a pre-order campaign, like you could get a free cat if you ordered my book. And if you're really desperate for a cat, you can still reach out to me. You know what I mean? I just want people to get my book. And so if that's what yeah, it is. Yeah. Well, yeah, you they really are wonderful. <laughs> so I'm really like selling, like I'm selling my watermelons right now. I'm yeah, no, out. but Marcy is also, you're an incredible artist and watercolor artist. And I, I you know, I think you have your own style when you create mm -hmm. um, pictures. And I have this like, like watercolor roses on my billboard yeah. that you sent me. Yeah, I said, I did roses this summer. And so, yeah, that yeah, was really cool. nice. Yeah. yeah. How, how often do you, like between watercoloring, swimming and writing, like what's the distribution? Those are the big things, right? Um, <laughs> Great question. I, I mean, yeah. I'm like, like, how much I know this person. I'm like, I love oh. it. But those are my big things, those things. I mean, swimming, I have, I used to belong to an indoor pool and then I stopped with the pandemic. And I think maybe this year I'm going to start again. Swimming is just so weather and summer related, which yeah. I love so much that I feel like yeah. I have to change that. And yeah. I want, and then writing, I mean, I know my back, just a fair lesson, my process is that I don't really start writing until after a book comes out and then I start to feel like, bad I'm, I'm so close to that part so I'm going to start writing again like really soon and I'm really excited and I don't know what I'm going to write but that's coming and that feels good that knowledge like I believe that even though I don't know what it will be yeah no there's We're something excited. kind of like nice about just starting and then yeah. it comes to you you know I think um yeah. it comes just, to you at different at different speeds like I for the third book I was like crossing the street and then I was like this would be a great short story and then yeah got a little bit longer and then my agent was like you can't sell this as a short story you should probably just sell it as a novel and then now I'm at page 99 so like what do I do you know it's like this it's just so bad. fun to have something long to keep working on though it's yeah like, hey, yeah it's, it's sort of like like you said in your essay and also you know your teacher it's like a drug right yeah, totally yeah it's great I'm happy for you by the way that's really good oh likewise um, I can't wait for you to start your drug yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're excited to see what's next for both of you, Marcy and Waikiki. And um, the signed book plates really are fantastic. So um, that's another shout out to all of our fantastic um, guests here. Grab your copy of Hurricane Girl while supplies last. You'll be able to get that signed book plate. Um, and Obviously, her love for cats is true, <laughs> but congratulations again, Marcy, and thank you both again for being with us this evening for this fantastic conversation. We really great. appreciate your time. Everyone, Hurricane Girl, it's out now. Grab your copies at RJ Julia Book Hampton or Wesley and RJ Julia, and we just want to thank you all for being with us, for supporting our authors, local independent bookstores. It means the world to us and we could not do what we do without you. So thank you from the bottom of our hearts. 
Have a great night. Thank you, Marcy. Thank you guys. Good night. Good night. Good night.